opening statement. The vaccinated Christmas. Last year in 2020, we heard about a new variant called the Delta variant. That time around, which was supposedly coming out from India. So naturally, fear was sent across all corners of the world saying this new variant is terrible and it's going to kill a lot. True, it did kill some. And it did in fact a lot. But that year too, like this time around, people went to forego the fear and embrace the joy of the season. So yes, we had to tweak our way of celebrating and understand the, understanding the real meaning of the season. Was it all about the decorations, the party Santa Claus gives, or fancy stuff? Or was it really about the birth of Jesus Christ? Now, after pondering upon it, it was evident that the real meaning of Christmas doesn't lie in any of those things, the parties, the fancy stuff that we, we are accustomed to doing. But it lies on the ability to understand the act of Christmas, which was the Savior entering our world at a time society was politically, economically, and socially corrupt, and bringing in hope for the ones that did not have hope. Now, I'm not talking about right now. I'm talking about the time Jesus was born more than 2,000 years ago. Now, if you look at history and the teachings of the Bible, you will see how much things were terrible for that society during that time. The poor were at their most impoverished. The rich were at their oblivious stage. Society was morally corrupt. It was tough. It was at that point Jesus was born. The Bible tells us that he did not come to this world as a king or an emperor. He comes born to a poor family, lives a very tough life, and teaches the world the right way to live. He did not come as a warrior or as a savior of society. However, he came as a humble baby born in a manger who was greeted by the poorest of the poor. In a way, if you look at it, he came to vaccinate that society that was morally, socially, and economically corrupt with the message of hope, forgiveness, love, and care. Despite your belief, maybe that's a good moral for all of us to abide by and understand. Well, in early 2020, last year, when COVID was becoming rampant, we were told that Sri Lanka was going to have a horrible situation. Life was going to be miserable where people would die on the streets. Sri Lanka is going to be like India. This country will be like one of the worst countries in the world due to COVID. The fear was grappling all of us, and many of us were spreading fear as well. Even you would have been a victim of that. Many of us opted to look at the negative side of things and engage in such, such activities. We started to spread the negativity all across our society. Society was like that despite not having a pandemic 2,000 years ago in the Middle East. If you are of Christian faith, then ask yourself, how different are you from the people that lived 2,000 years ago with what they did at that time by spreading the corrupt mindset of the society to today, 2,000 years after? See, if Jesus was born amidst a society filled with such negativity, such oppression, such fear, such corruption, such horror, panic, agitation, and despair, well, Jesus came to vaccinate that society with hope, joy, love, forgiveness, truth, and life. He didn't do that with fanfare or big parties or a big massive display of power. He just came as a baby born in a manger surrounded by the poorest of the poor and yet changed the direction of this world. So all in all, it's not difficult for all of, of you to understand the true meaning of Christmas during this time. What we do not know what's going to happen to our economy. We do not know what kind of pandemic or variant might pop up in the days to come. We do not know how the world will be. And right now, there's a lot of negativity, oppression, fear, corruption, horror, panic, agitation, and despair. However, I think the true ascent of Christmas calls each and every one to do our little part in our little manger filled with the loved ones that surrounds us to spread the hope, joy, love, forgiveness, and the truth of life. Instead of for, uh, figuring out 
cracking our brains as to what the solutions to these problems of our current society might be. We just have to look at what Jesus did 2,000 years ago because by now we should and must understand that the solutions have always been there. All right, I have a lot more to discuss. The true meaning of Christmas, the church, and how the faith can direct issues of our society. For that, I'm honored to be uh, joined by the Lord Bishop of Colombo of the Church of Ceylon, Right Reverend Dushanta Rodrigo. The bishop will be here shortly, but before that, uh, Danny Dutanavasam joins me here in the studio with a look at uh, tonight's uh, real story. Uh, Merry Christmas, Danny Dutanavasam. Um, Merry Christmas to see you. To um, what exactly are you focusing, like, I mean, like, during the past few weeks, we've been talking about this negative mindset of our society and how it has impacted. Because everything, if you if you just switch on any any medium, whether it's television, radio, social media, you see such negativity of our society being um, you know spread all across. And and nobody has any kind of good thing to say about this country because they think everything is bad, which is which is not the case if we actually try a little bit in order to find some good. So what exactly are you focusing right now? Maybe Christmas is a good time to change all that. Yeah, I think um, Christmas, again, we have had multiple situations in our country where we had opportunities to reflect and to rethink where we are, but we don't generally use them. But I think Christmas is something we can actually use given that it's a global, as in it's a holiday celebrated by everyone. And I think we have to get our priorities straight this Christmas and really understand what Christmas means. And that is where we start in the real story. And we want to, what we try to end in the real story is to give this message of hope, to really give an understanding that we are not lost and we have some purpose and we are going somewhere. Uh, in understanding that, the true meaning of Christmas has been a subject matter that has been given much priority, especially in modern times, given the novel challenges people across the world have to face. But is this the reality envisioned in the scriptures when thinking of the day Jesus Christ was born? Christmas is a time many look forward to given the holiday festivities that are planned. This took a back seat during the pandemic, given the regulations to socially distance and isolate oneself. In this backdrop, understanding the true meaning of Christmas has become more important today than ever before. The common situation that has arisen with regards to the celebration of the day Jesus Christ was born is that qualities such as vanity, wastefulness and gluttony have overtaken the spirit of giving joy to one another. The commercialization of the holiday has led to predatory marketing strategies that have pushed people to outspend their purchasing power and move into a more dreadful time period just for the sake of upholding social norms. There is a global explosion of prices specifically for the seasonal period. Adobe Digital Price Index identifies that online inflation has hit record highs during this year, particularly due to supply chain issues. The big issue, however, has been that the rise in prices haven't stopped people from purchasing. It has been quite the opposite. Adobe shows that in November this year, consumers saw more than 3 billion out-of-stock messages from internet retailers. The dramatic rise in e-commerce amid movement restrictions induced by COVID-19 increased online retail sales share of total retail sales from 16 to 19% in 2020, according to estimates of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. The UNCTAD has also observed similar developments when assessing individual e-commerce platforms, which have also witnessed billions in rise for their turnover given the pandemic. Statista.com has projected that in Sri Lanka, the revenue in the e-commerce market is projected to reach 2.095 million US dollars in 2021. Online sales remain strong, growing nearly 14% to 114 billion US dollars in November this year. Adobe expects the out-of-stock trend to continue throughout all of December. Studies have shown that a large amount of consumers have started or completed their Christmas gift purchasing by October itself. British nationals' total spending across a variety of categories identified by YouGov, a UK international internet-based market research and data analytics firm, for Christmas spending has risen for 2021, with the average person expecting to spend £1,108 during the festive season. That is closer to rupees. Half of over-indebted British citizens suggest that their debt will worsen as a result of Christmas. In Australia, an average person is expected to spend over $1,232, which is above 250,000 rupees. In the midst of all these expenses, multiple market analysis reports have identified that vast amounts of gifts given during Christmas are either unwanted or returned. My wish is that you would get away from the consumerism and center your life on the person of Jesus, who is love, and therefore your celebrations your visits, they all will be filled with Christ-like love and forgiveness 
Selfishness, an aspect that has unfortunately crept into the lives of most Sri Lankans, is another key aspect that needs to be addressed. On Get Real, we have prioritized the need for Sri Lankans to change perception and adopt a more patriotic mindset that contributes to the growth of the country. When assessing questions such as what the country can do for you without paying attention to one's own responsibilities, the core objective of a religion with deep roots in society would be missed. This is evident when assessing the perception of the younger generation on the Christmas season, which has pushed away from being a religious holiday into a celebration of Santa Claus and the Christmas tree. In reality, Santa Claus and the Christmas tree were not part of the birth of Christ. The behavior of certain believers of Christianity have resulted in the rest of society believing that the true meaning of Christmas is actually the celebration of commercialism. Therefore, whatever we do has an impact on all the others. That is why there is a responsibility on our part to be conscious of the presence of the others and therefore to limit ourselves in order to ensure that the others do not suffer because of us. This is the purpose of true freedom. And I hope and pray that all Sri Lankans will understand that they must not think only in these little isolated islands, place themselves in these islands and divide themselves from the others and then start thinking only about their rights, their dignity, their status in society. But think about all the others and seek friendship, fraternity and integration with the others. Though pomp and pageantry are rewarding elements within the Christmas season, it must be understood, especially here in Sri Lanka, where huge effort is being given to revive an ailing economy, that the best investments to make this time around would be in our country. Though a huge effort is being made by multiple parties within the country to portray the nation as a failure, little thought is given to the repercussions of these statements. It is important to foster hope this season to thereby benefit the country in the long run. It is also vital that Sri Lanka understands diversity is a strength rather than a divisive matter. And Christmas is a good time to rethink that message of unity. As a Buddhist leader, as a Buddhist monk in Sri Lanka, and also as an academician, as a, a university lecturer, I would like to say that Christianity as a universal religion leads the society into the right path. We have to get united by Sri Lankans as well as the people uh, of, of the world in the name of humanism to get ready and united for the sake of the well-being of all humans. The choices we make across the year should certainly be reflected upon this Christmas, given that these are some of the essential years this country has faced in a long period of time. Mahesh, I believe Fitch gave us a gift this December. <laughs> Hopefully the gifts that come along this season will be better than that. <laughs> Hopefully, but the thing is, is uh, organizations like Fitch Ratings and, and all these uh, other organizations, uh, I mean, we've been talking about this right throughout. Uh, when you try to do something different uh, than what is being said, like there is a lot of uh, pushback towards a liberalized economy, liberalized uh, way of thinking. And once you understand that it doesn't work and you go towards the path of, you know, looking at your own country and, and trying to uh, establish the values of this nation, obviously there's going to be a blowback. And that is very evident with Fitch ratings uh, downgrading our country and because they don't want Sri Lanka to stand by ourselves because once we do that, all the masters we've been bowing down like World Bank, IMF and all those, we, we no longer will be serving them and that's a very good point that you made. Uh, once again, Merry Christmas Danidu and thank you very much. Um, well, thank you. Uh, that is uh, Danidu Tanwasam with a look at the real story. Let's take a short commercial break. Upon our return, the Lord Bishop of the Diocese of Colombo, the Church of Ceylon, Right Reverend Dushant Rodrigo, will join me. This is the Christmas special of Get Real. Be right back in a moment. <laughs>